Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. The topic for today is Big B's Crushing Hand. No, actually it's not Big B's Crushing Hand for those of you who are wondering. The topic for today is Mage Hand. The clever uses of Mage Hand. You could say this is a Mage Hand guide for Dungeons and Dragons 5e, not necessarily any other version of the game because it's very specific to the rules as written as such in the player's handbook and we're going to go through it very very briefly in terms of the written descriptor and that is it is one action to cast that's the casting time it has a range of 30 feet it has a verbal component some of you have to speak some words and a somatic com component which means you have to make a gesture it's a utility spell it's conjuration it has a duration of one minute and basically you create a spectral floating hand which allows you to manipulate objects that's what the whole purpose of the spell is that does not mean that you can't see the hand because you most certainly can see the hand for those of you who are wondering so how do we deal with this in terms of applying it to Dungeons and Dragons we're going to have to apply it very carefully uh, what can it do it speci specifies you can manipulate an object you can open and unlock doors and containers you can stow and retrieve an item uh, from an open container or pour the contents of a vial out. The thing we also need to remember is there is a weight limit. The weight limit is 10 pounds. It doesn't make an attack, so anything that would be classified as an attack, we can't use. So how do we deal with this? We're going to deal with this very carefully. Uh, you're going to try to be very careful at how you approach using it so that you don't wind up not being able to use it. In what ways can Mage Hand be applied to your Dungeons & Dragons adventure to help solve problems? I feel like Mage Hand is a problem solving uh, tool. It's a cantrip, a spell that is designed specifically for doing that sort of thing. I'm going to go through all of the different ways you can use it. At the end of the video, I'm going to give you the, the best ideas and I'm also going to give you the sage advice. So stick around if you want to get hold of that as well. All in one place. So number one, you can use Mage Hand to pull a lever that is out of reach. That could also mean you might be able to get hold of an item that is in a pool of acid without getting burned. So a really good way of getting access to something you can't normally reach into without getting hurt. Number two, as we said, you can open or close a door, a hatch, a lid, while stay, staying at a safe distance from any potential enemy ambushes or traps that might be located on that door, hatch, lid, so forth. If the door is too heavy, there are ways of dealing with that and I'm going to explain them further on in the video. Number three, you can open a treasure chest to avoid being stuck to a mimic or being eaten by that mimic once it gets its little uh, teeth into you. Number four, you can pip pick up an object that might be out of reach. This is a little bit like pulling the lever, but why would we apply this? What if you are behind prison bars or behind bars of some kind and you have to get hold of some keys? You can take those keys off the hook and now you have access to them so you can escape. Now I know a lot of people are going to say, yeah, but what about, you know, if we want to get the keys off the actual guard? You can't actually use Mage Hand for that purpose without some other class feature but you can take them off a peg or a hook and bring them to you past the bars okay number five is you can pick up an object that might have been trapped or a cursed magic item and handle it safely it allows you to pick up dog poo and also broken glass very helpful if you have a dungeon master with a strange sense of humor Number six, you can move a winch to lower a drawbridge or raise up a portcullis by looking through the arrow slit because normally the, the actual winch will be on the other side. So you, you might be able to see through the bars as well, but an arrow slit, if you can see through the arrow slit, often they'll put a winch in the guard houses either side of a drawbridge or a portcullis and by looking through that arrow slit, you'll be able to see the, uh, the winch. You don't need to have a great line of sight. You just have to have some sort of line of sight 
to be able to use Mage Hand. And yes, as a lot of people will be wondering and asking, yes, Mage Hand does require you to cite what you are doing. If you can't cite it, you probably can't use it. And that applies with almost all spells. Okay, number seven. You can snag a winch or a lever with a grappling hook. Now, a grappling hook is light enough to do that. Tie it to a silk rope because silk rope is nice and light. The combined weight of a grappling hook and silk rope is not greater than 10 pounds. You move the grappling hook into place, hook it over the winch or the lever, and then you can use the rope to pull on it and apply more than 10 pounds of force to shift it. So, you were wondering how to get past that winch or lever that you couldn't use or maneuver with uh, Mage Hand directly because your Dungeon Master said it's too hard or it's stuck or it's rusty. There's your solution. Okay, number eight. You can throw a pebble or a stick or anything really, a piece of meat, as a distraction for a century or centuries from cover so they can't see where you are. My suggestion to you is because you have to actually speak words and do gestures, it's not the gestures not the problem, it's speaking words, cast Mage Hand further away from where you need to actually use it, then come closer and then manipulate that pebble, stick or piece of meat. Okay, number nine. You can activate a trap, you can press down on a pressure plate, you can trip a tripwire or flick a tripwire at a safe distance, activating that trap, allowing it to do its thing, and hopefully it doesn't reset, and then you can move past it without getting crunched, gouged, killed in some horrible, torturous way. Number 10. You can touch a guard to scare them or distract them, so like placing the mage hand on their shoulder, and this allows you to sneak past them or at least scare them away. Now I know what you're thinking. When you say touch them, what do you mean? I just specified touch them on the shoulder. Okay, don't go anywhere with this. Number 11. That is you can knock on a door. Now you might be in a dungeon, you might be somewhere else. Get the enemy's attention. You can do this from distance so that they open the door and then you can spring your attack or ambush on them, whether that be firing arrows at them or sneaking through a window or going around them while they're doing something else. So really handy being able to do that at 30 feet. Number 12. You can tie the enemy's feet together with string or if they have shoelaces, tie the shoelaces together, that'll slow them down or trip them up, gives you time to do whatever you need to do. Number 13, you can feed a hungry wild animal, that's right, hungry wild animals like their fingers, so keep your fingers out of reach so you don't lose them by using mage hand to feed the bears, although I think the recommendation is you should not feed the wild bears. Number 14, you can hold a flaming torch so that you are hands free. So both hands are free to do other things rather than hold the torch in place. Particularly if you don't have a torch scone, sconce somewhere that you can put it on and you don't want to drop it on the ground. Although I have done a video on the torch and clever uses for the torch and dropping it on the ground is not a big deal. In fact, in some cases it could be very helpful to you. <clears throat> Go see the video if you want to know more. Number 15, the Rogue's Arcane Trickster feature, this class feature, this is Legidim, that's it, Legidim, Legidimane, Legidimane, basically at level 3 you get an, the ability to do far more with Mage Hand than you could ever imagine, and I'm going to go through all of these really quick, quickly because there's quite a few, but and a few different applications to it, but the thing to remember is the Arcane Trickster's use of Mage Hand makes it possible for them to have an invisible mage hand, which makes it hugely useful, far more useful than it was before, because now nobody can see what's going on. This allows you to create a whole lot of deception and tricks that uh, scare people, intimidate people, that you couldn't do before. With Arcane Trickster, this allows you to use your mage hand to pick a lock. As long as you have thieves tools, and Mage Hand, and you're an Arcane Trickster at level 3, you're all good. 
That means that if you're not an arcane trickster, you can't use your thieves tools and mage hand to pick locks because there's already a feature that does that. Number 18. Arcane Trickster gives you the surgical capacity to use Mage Hand to disable traps. And disabling a trap when you're right next to it is a bad idea. It's always good to do that at a distance. Number 19. Arcane Tricksters make it possible to steal a stowed item in a container on a creature without them noticing. There is a, a check required. It does involve a sleight of hand check and perception check, but I'm sure you'll manage. It does allow you to do that though. Number 20, Arcane Trickster allows you to plant an item in a container. That could be a pack, it could be something else, it could be a pouch, and that allows you to frame your enemy for a crime they may not have committed. Oh, you know, that sounds terrible, but um, there are uses for that. What about number 21? You can cut two holes in a white sheet and then place a ball or stick a ball underneath the sheet where the eye, um, eye holes are, then lift it up with mage hand to scare somebody thinking that there is in fact a fake, well it's a ghost. They think it's a ghost, but it in fact is a fake ghost. You can also attach uh, a sheet to something like, or a cloak to something like a torch or a candle and have that float and at a distance it looks as if there's a person moving around with a torch. You won't be able to use this up close, it will be pretty obvious to most creatures and monsters, but if you do that at a distance, a little bit different. Now this is the one that I keep cropping up and I know there'll be somebody who's wanting to mention what about this combination because I believe it's a combination that was used on Critical Role, hence the artwork. Number 22, if you have a gnome caster, what you do is you use the enlarge reduce spell, you cast that on yourself, reducing yourself from small to tiny, reducing your weight by about an eight, 18 times, you see, become 18 times um, less heavy than you were before, which should mean you can pick yourself up with your mage hand, allowing you to sort of fly around or stay out of reach. Here's the problem with using this in this way. It requires dungeon master discretion as you can only manipulate an object as the spell states. Object, not a creature. So there is a little bit of a problem with the application of that, that spell in that way. But I know that it was a very popular thing to discuss on Facebook. Okay, sage advice. Here are a couple of things to bear in mind. Mage Hand doesn't travel with the caster when the caster is moving. You actually have to use the uh, spell and shift it round if you want to do that. It doesn't just follow you. Mage Hand can't be attacked. So if somebody tries to attack the Mage Hand, it's going to do nothing. You can't make attacks with Mage Hand, as I said. You could stabilize a dying creature with a healer's kit. Of course, doing so requires like one hand, so don't think you're going to be able to do that all in one round. You'll need to have the healer's kit already out, or um, I would imagine you're probably going to have to have some way of setting it up. Not really the best application, but the use of a healing potion and pouring it down somebody's throat with mage hand could be really useful. Mage hand does not trigger the alarm spell. That's right because Mage Hand is not a creature. And the spell does stipulate that a creature triggers the alarm spell. So I've covered pretty much everything I think you're gonna to need to know with regard to Mage Hand. If you found this useful, fantastic. I actually have a whole bunch of videos on spells and also on how to use different types of adventuring gear. It seems to be a popular thing nowadays. If you're not interested in that sort of stuff, that's fine. I have hundreds of videos for players and Dungeon Masters that you are welcome to go and check out. If you want to support the channel so I keep doing videos like this, then you can do so on Patreon. You can do it uh, using the affiliate links to the book depository and Amazon down below in the description. You can do so by using the merchandise shelf. I have a merchandise shelf underneath all of my videos. 
or you can just watch my videos, that's fine. And make sure to share, like, and subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. And very important, if I have missed something, and I probably have, then put it down in the comment section. Add your comment in. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.